Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads, and if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I love mountain boarding. It is an awesome sport that, personally, I think is a little underappreciated, and because it's such a small sport, I think it's also underserved by a really limited gear selection. And I'm doing my part to try to combat that. I have been prototyping a deck board geometry that, when it's finished, I hope will bring something unique to the market and will also be a joy to ride. I started with a veneer deck that I pressed in a vac bag, and recently I pressed a dual core composite deck using a 3D printed set of molds. And I got a little big for my britches on that last one. The deck didn't really end up representing the geometry of the mold set that well. And I still want to know how it feels to ride all those little experimental details that I put into that mold. So this time around, I'm going back to that same 3D printed experimental set of molds, and I'm going to be bringing what I learned from that first deck as far as veneer selection and things like that to try to bring together everything I've experimented with so far and see if I can't get a really good board. So let's start by looking at the layout. This is gonna be a nine ply board, same as my first one. The first deck I made was a combination of bamboo and rock maple with just a little cherry thrown in for flavor. It worked pretty dang well, but I found it a bit stiff and heavy. So this time around, I'm using rock maple for the outer layers and cross grains, and the rest of the board is gonna be birch. I'm also making the deck a bit shorter to reduce the amount of mass. The maple is stiff and poppy, but it's a heavier wood, and the birch is flexy and light. I'm hoping that by sandwiching one in the other, I'll wind up with a deck that is light, springy, and has a lot of snap. Once my plies were glued up, it's over to the press. I got my layup between the two halves of my mold and clamped it down. I'm using the same inexpensive spar press that I built on the channel a little while ago. I'll link that video, you know, up to the right. And that's looking really good. I must have gotten the offsets in my mold right because the blank fits in there like a glove. Let's give it a day for the glue to dry and then crack it open. sure I'm getting a nice solid deck, so I waited a whole week to let this one finish drying out. Unlike my skate deck prototypes, I know I'm really going to put this one through the ringer, so let's give it the best chance possible. I cut it to shape, rounded the edges with the Bishop Rounding Guide, available at goodroadscollective.com, and sanded it smooth. And the deck came out great. This time around, I got all the curves and shapes exactly the way I designed them, so let me take you on a little tour and show you the features of this deck. Something I find irritating about the mountain board industry is how non-standardized everything is. One of the biggest offenders in that arena is that the two main styles of trucks that are available, the skate style trucks and what we'll call the matrix style trucks, require different nose and tail angles to work properly. The skate style truck is basically a low angle traditional kingpin truck, so it requires less of a nose and tail angle to get its work tilt. Where the channel style trucks, which are sort of their own thing, but they're effectively a zero degree truck, so the angle in the nose and tail are what give the truck the ability to turn. This discrepancy means that the decks are built to solely be used with one style of truck or the other. That's annoying, and it's not something you see in any other board sport. The lack of intercompatibility is bad for someone trying to build out a quiver, bad for someone who's trying to upgrade their board piece by piece from a lower quality board to a higher quality board, and therefore bad for growing the sport. So here's my shot at a solution to that. A skate style truck needs a nose angle of about 15 degrees and a channel style truck needs about 30. The angle of the nose and tail on my deck is right smack in the middle at 22.5 degrees. And to go along with that experimental deck geometry, I've printed a set of 7.5 degree wedges. Since the nose angle is right in the middle, you can wedge up to 30 degrees for matrix style trucks, or wedge down to 15 degrees for skate style trucks. I definitely want to get some testing in to see if the system works as well as I think it will, but if it does, it means that one deck will be able to work with almost every mountain board truck on the market. 
The deck has a nice arch in the middle for clearance and to act as a bit of a spring. And a nice wide area underfoot to give you a good amount of leverage. The footbed sections of the board also have a mild concave to help keep your feet in place and make it easier to initiate turns. Another little detail that I'm excited about is the footbeds are canted at a three degree angle. The Mountain Board Company Harrow does a similar thing. Their decks are flat underfoot, but I actually borrowed this idea from the snowboard company Arbor, who puts a three degree lateral wedge in their bindings so that the platform you're pushing against lines up more with your legs and the soles of your feet when you're riding. Think of the Vitruvian Man. When your legs are straight, your feet are flat, but when your legs are spread out a bit, like in a riding stance, your feet are actually at a bit of an angle. So the hope is that this little angle will be nice and comfortable, and it has the added benefit of extending the curve in the nose and the tail more gradually into the deck. This makes pressing easier, and without that abrupt, often steep angle at the nose and tail, the whole deck should work better as an integrated spring. That's the hope anyway, but there's only one way to find out. Take it out for a test drive. I went out to a local spot and did a couple quick grass laps to make sure everything is tuned in. And then there was this natural feature that I've been eyeing that I really want to try out. Security came and they were very nice about it, but I do have to stop there, so I'll just have to take it. I'll come back later, there's a, it's a cool little cliff drop I want to hit. Uh, I love this thing. I mean, tentatively, I've still got to get a lot of test riding in, but if the birch holds up, I really like the way this deck feels and I really like the way that it rides. The concave and that footbed angle is really comfy. The wedging in the nose and tail seems to be working great, and to me, it feels exactly the same as a deck where that angle is built right into the nose and tail of the board. I was actually expecting it to feel a little bit more like a top mount, but so far, I can't really notice a difference. And I can actually show you guys something about mountain boards and how a good mountain board works. There's a bit of a misconception that the shock absorption in a mountain board comes from the trucks, and I think that's because a lot of the older style trucks had springs in them instead of bushings. And to some degree that's true. If you're looking straight down the board, if one wheel hits a root or a rock, those springs will help dampen out and absorb some of the shock of jostly terrain. But the pop or springiness of the board, if you're hitting a lip or landing to flat, that comes from the deck. And check it out, that natural rock kicker, which is a totally awesome feature by the way, is basically like a six foot drop to flat. Watch what the deck does at the moment of impact. It flexes like a spring, making the landing much softer and easier to ride away from. All good mountain board decks do this, and I am stoked to see that mine is doing it too. If the materials hold up, if the deck doesn't get floppy, and it keeps absorbing impact this way session after session, I think I will have a really good deck on my hands. And that's not to say I'm done. I still got a lot of work to do. I'd really like to get the wedge system into the place where it can use the stock hardware. Right now, I am having to use longer bolts because that would just be easier for everyone involved and would help with that intercompatibility issue that I was kind of griping about before. And I'm gonna have to remake the molds. I may want to adjust the footbeds and my built-in drilling guides for the bindings and the truck mounting holes didn't really come out right. And having those integrated into the mold in a way that works will make them much easier to produce. You know, when I get my production set up ready to go. It's coming. But yeah, I am well on my way to making what I think is gonna be a really, really good mountain board deck, and I am so excited about that. So, if you wanna see where that goes, or all of the other awesome DIY board sport projects we do here on the channel, you're just gonna to have to go ahead and subscribe. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you got any questions about mountain boarding, I'll answer any question about mountain boarding you got. I wanna get more people out there on the dirt. Y'all are missing out, it's so much fun. Ask me about it, I'll tell you what's up. 
thanks as always to my amazing patrons. Their support is what makes it possible for me to keep tackling these projects week after week. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a link down below. And as always, I love having you guys along for the ride. Maybe I can get more of you out there along for the ride on some dirt. And until next time, I'll see you soon. We like when work goes smoothly. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do.